Itch at the Freakin' Movies with your freaking host, Creationist Cat. Today's freaking movie is this hunk of shit movie I found starring Steven Crowder. Good evening, Shadowites. Lord's chosen movie critic, Creationist Cat here. And today, well, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. We do have a huge hunk of shit movie on our hands. Yes, we're talking about 2008's Bend and Break. And look, it truly pains me to admit that it's a totally huge grade A hunk of shit because it stars one of the premier homophobic, Christian cross-dressing, global warming science and AIDS epidemic denying comedians out there on YouTube today, Steven Crowder. The film is actually written and directed by his brother, Jordan Crowder who kind of looks exactly like you'd expect Steven to look like if he was bloated and you left his head on a radiator for a really, really, really long time. Anyhow, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so now without any further freaking ado, I give you Jordan Crowder's magnum freaking opus, Bend and Break. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm really warning you now, this is a hunk of shit, all right? To those of you who think I am overstating things, uh, maybe slightly, I'll admit it is a little disrespectful to hunks of shit. Okay, so we start off with this panorama from a rooftop, which I bet you'll wish you had jumped off of by the end of this movie. I don't know why we brag about it. Brag about what? Sex. Why do we brag about sex? Sex is a, a normal bodily function. I don't think I brag about sex. Okay, so here we have a young Steven Crowder in all his acne-ridden glory, and he and his friends are talking about bragging about having sex, which Crowder says he doesn't do, but fun fact, four years later, he did precisely that when he wrote this editorial on foxnews.com about losing his virginity to his wife on their wedding night, and then shamed couples for having premarital sex calling him floozies, harlots, and promiscuous charlatans, which isn't hypocritical in the slightest for a guy who makes his living complaining about virtue signaling SJWs. So anyhow, these guys talk a little more. Andrew is known as the sex And you really can't understand a freaking word they're saying because this movie has the sound quality of a Lithuanian snuff film. Although, I do have to say, it's pretty cool that they got access to the set of the Peach Pit for Beverly Hills 90210. So, later the guys leave Steven Crowder alone, probably to contemplate what a horrible person he'll become. Then these two guys go outside and start talking. Uh, it's insufferably horrible. I'm not gonna subject you to any of this, but some of you may be thinking, hey, haven't I seen that Crowder brother before who's disgustingly picking things out of his eye right now? And the answer is yes, you probably have. He was Steven Crowder's rap partner. It is totally not cringy in any way whatsoever. Rap song, Mr. America. Pretty good, uh, pr pretty good, but personally, I prefer their live at CPAC version much better. Yeah, this is clearly the superior version. I mean, you've got this old lady dancing with the fanny pack right here, and I'm pretty sure that that's atheist YouTuber Aaron Raw in the crowd right there. And you're obviously putting on a great show because the one black guy in the entire room is taping it with his phone right there, and he really seems to be enjoying it, at least until Crowder drops an end bomb. Okay, I'm just gonna casually check my phone and act like nothing happened. So meanwhile, back in this piece of crap movie, they're still over at the Peach Pit and we're treated to some global warming denial dialogue because, you know, this is something with Steven Crowder in it. I just don't believe in it. How do you explain the summer is getting warm? That, that's your basis for global warming? Yeah. I'm just saying that technology's come a long way and, and 
the environment's not really doing that bad. Incidentally, I think Potholer 54 was supposed to show up to debug golf their claims, but Steven Crowder canceled at the last minute. So anyhow, we're back with these two fart faces. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Something that, that I have learned. Okay, at this point, I think I'm starting to get why they called this movie Bend and Break, because that's obviously what happened to the sound equipment. So anyhow, this lady walks by, and she drops her scarf. You see that girl? Which girl? She dropped her scarf. Okay, incidentally, Shadowbites, this is the single most baffling moment of the movie to me. Because look at this. Her scarf is so securely attached to her body right there that I would find her arm falling off more plausible. So anyhow, in some freak occurrence that cannot possibly be rationally explained, her ginormous scarf somehow falls off of her without her noticing. I don't know, maybe she intentionally knocked it off or something. It just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, he returns it to her, and at the end of this exchange, she decides to give him her number. Not exactly sure why. Maybe she's just attracted to dudes who look like slightly fuglier versions of Ted Cruz. Okay, so now we're at the apartment shared by both Steven Crowder and Butterface Crowder over here. And by now you're probably thinking, this is a Steven Crowder movie. Are we going to be treated to a hilarious scene where he's dressed up in a wig or where he flashes his penis in an insanely transphobic attempt at sketch comedy? Well, the answer is unfortunately no, but we do get to see this. <laughs> And this shot of mites right here is actually a perfect metaphor for how I feel about this movie. I really wish this movie would have closed the door while it took a shit. So, uh, anyhow, remember this loser? Well, he runs into this girl right here, who is, uh, this girl that he had a crush on in high school, but he never had the guts to tell her, of course, because all the characters in this movie are total loser beta male cocks. You were always the best painter in school. Anyway, what about you? What have you been up to? Uh, this, uh, absolutely not. You're, are you still acting? Definitely not at this current moment. So anyway, she writes down her number on his hand. Not exactly sure why. Maybe she likes to mark losers as her territory? I understand that inclination. That's why we cats sometimes urinate on your clothing. Uh, wait, wait, Junior, you forgot your coffee. Wow. Way to go out of your way to let her know that she left her coffee there. She's a whole eight feet away. Ah, oh, this asshole's stealing it. That was his plan all along. He's, he's a coffee thief. Cheap bastard. Meanwhile, back at the peach pit, these losers meet up again and were treated to some truly sparkling dialogue. How's it going? Good. Did you guys, uh, you guys eat yet? Where are the other guys? Hey, left. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so boring! And honestly, I'm not used to boring things happening at the Peach Pit. I, I, I mean, I remember Color Me Bad was there one time, and, and then uh, there were those episodes later where bands played at the Peach Pit after dark. Maroon 5, Christina Aguilera, The Cramps, The Flaming Lips even played there! Mm -hmm. Is that the Flaming Lips? Well, it's not Michael Bolton. No, it's not. It's the Flaming Lips at the Peach Pit. How did this happen? How did Tiffany Amber Thiessen convince them to play there? How did all of those people at that stage fit into this tiny restaurant? Where did everything go? Is that Seth Green? Oh my God, is the manager having a heart attack? Should somebody call a medic? But wait, I got a better question. Why are the Flaming Lips playing at the Peach Pit? Is anything even real? Are we all just living in a simulation? Will this movie please close the door while it takes a shit? How did this woman's scarf fall off? It's practically shown to her body. It just doesn't make any sense. Anyhow, speaking of the scarf lady, uh, later she and Butterface Crowder go on a date at the Peach Pit, and he explains how his previous girlfriend of three years dumped him for a manager of a donut shop. Well, I dated a girl for about three years. We started in high school, but she started working at this, that new donut chain that came into town. They had some, uh, some 
managers from other stores, and I guess one of these guys schmoozed her along, and she ended up starting dating him and stuff. Anyhow, later, these three boring assholes are playing cards when one of the dude's teenage sisters comes over, and Crowder obviously has the hots for her. How old is she? She just turned 17. Why? She's, she's kind of pretty hot, maybe. So it doesn't really matter that Crowder's best friend begs him not to try and fornicate with his barely legal still at high school sister. Crowder goes after her anyway, cause uh, everybody in this movie is pretty much a total piece of shit or a pathetic beta male cuck. Oh, and speaking of pathetic beta male cucks, Butterface Crowder over here goes on another date with the mysterious disappearing scarf lady, and the movie they go to see is The Living End. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, and I'm sure most of you are, the final scene of this movie involves the lead character dragging his boyfriend out on the beach and sodomizing him while sticking a gun in his mouth. What the fuck are you waiting for? Just do it! So these two obviously had a very romantic date, uh, and I guess he really wants to impress her because right afterwards he just chucks his popcorn bucket onto the street. Big ones, you get refilled, right? And obviously, treating the streets like it's a freaking junkyard is just irresistible to this woman, cause a few moments later she's kissing this slovenly litterbug asshole. And meanwhile, back at the peach pit, Crowder's talking about women's rights. The women's rights thing is a double standard, like, now they have, oh, but now we're not allowed to hit them? You know, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure this movie was influential on Jordan Peterson. And then it becomes physical. Right, like if, if we move beyond the boundaries of civil discourse, we know what the next step is. Okay, that's forbidden in, in discourse with women. And so I don't think that men can control crazy women. Dr. Peterson is correct. Men cannot control crazy women, as exemplified by this next scene right here. Personally, I kind of like older guys. Yeah, older guys are actually overrated. Uh, I did this girl in the 10th grade. And she was really good looking, but she started dating this other guy, and he was all, Whoa! Haley. Haley, Haley, what are you doing? Mm. It's been a long time since I've seen you, so I thought we could catch up, talk. I didn't expect this. You know what? Uh, get out. Get out! Mm. So, yeah, a totally humiliated Crowder eventually gets out, and she slams the door in his face. I don't know. Maybe she thought he was going to start taking a shit. Anyhow, a few minutes later, her brother comes home, and this happens. What the hell is this? What's wrong? Blake came over yesterday. Came here? He, he came in your room. And what? What? He tried to take advantage of me. Yes, she makes a false rape accusation, but her naively trusting brother reacts with the same passion that any man would, learning that his best friend just sexually violated his sister. That shitty bitch. But don't worry guys, he does the right thing. And by the right thing, I mean he doesn't call the police at all, he calls Crowder instead, and he says this. You're a shit! Yeah, you hear that, you shitty bitch? Don't you touch my sister again or I'll call you a f shit. You wouldn't like that now, would ya? Okay, now one thing I didn't tell you guys about before is how the scarf lady has this ex-boyfriend who sings in a U2 cover band. Like, for real, that's really part of the movie. And he's definitely a douchebag, but you know, he's still a lot cooler than some pathetic litterbug cock with a Ted Cruz looking butterface. So, the second he shows up, they go inside, and we presume they fuck their brains out. I'm just assuming they do, because like I said earlier, literally every single character in this movie is a horribly unlikable piece of shit. And everybody's a total cuck, too. I mean, look at what happens when this guy finally tries to kiss the girl he's had a crush on for almost ten years. Well, you can always visit... Jules. What was that? It's called a very pathetic man trying to kiss you. I've been waiting to do that since the 8th grade. <laughs> Can we be more than just friends? No, <laughs> so she literally kicks this pathetic loser out, and you know what? That's what he gets for stealing that coffee. Karma's a bitch, asshole!
But the biggest cuck of the movie is absolutely Butterface Crowder. Because Scarf Lady comes over, tells him about the U2 guy and what a huge cuck he is. And as if that isn't humiliating enough, he goes to see her later and this happens. <laughs> So that's pretty much the movie, guys. Uh, if I had to describe it, I'd say it's kind of like a cross between a low-budget, slice-of-a-knife indie like the Brothers McMullen, and also a little like getting kicked square in the nuts by a rhinoceros and dying slowly of internal bleeding while an army of African fire ants comes along and starts eating you alive. I hate everyone in this movie. I don't understand why Steven Crowder and the brother who thinks he raped his sister are suddenly cool at the end here, because they definitely did resolve that storyline. I have no clue what's up with this woman's scarf. I don't want to know, but I do know that you should totally rate, comment, and freaking subscribe. You should also click down in the Christ box and check out t-shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, or to become a patron on Patreon. And you don't have to, but if you don't, you'll totally burn in hell. Buddy. You are incredibly, insanely, totally awesome, but you know who's incredibly, insanely, totally awesome-er? Our Legion of Extraordinary Shadowbites. Those are our $5 and above and $10 and above patrons that are literally the super glue keeping this house of worship together. Come on already, become an Extraordinary Shadowbite. Get your name up here every single freaking video at the $5 or more level, and at the $10 or more level, you could be part of our monthly super duper dancey dance shout out party like these shot of bites right here Andrew Gilbert BB Hammer Bobo Link Carla Thompson Chetty Wacker Chris Nesbitt Kurt Smith Glenn Lester Gary Steelman Holden Cantrell Immaculate Knowledge Jason Witte, Joseph Proctor, Julian Casey, Joe Noble, or Noble, I don't know, Jonas Pedersen, La Loba, Landon No, Mark Ukrainitz, Matt Lillenfeld, Matthew Larson, Michael Vale, Michael Osborne, Nicola D'Amicchio, Mystery Cat Kevin! And Thunderman! Thunderman! Something like that. Pamela Brown! Patrick Espinoza! Richard Hunt! Ryan McClure! Sally Ferguson! Shenanigan! S.R. Foxley! Staggles! Susan Schindler Laredo! The Space Pigeon! William Agnew! Wolfgang Ilmeyer! Wonder Woman! And Red Nicholson! Hey, you know, if you reach this point of the video, you you watched the whole thing, didn't you? Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. You know, if I see you in person, give you a high five. You know what? Give yourself a high five. You deserve it. You just watch yourself a CC video. Now watch another. Or click one of these links. They're all fantastic. I swear to God. Would I lie to you? Would I freaking lie to you? Jesus!